Hey everyone, this is Rebecca from Chemnitz and I'm here today with another dyeing experiment. I have been asked numerous times if orange food coloring will break into red and yellow and I figured there's no better way to test this out than to make some orange food coloring and do some dip dyeing to see if we can get all of the red to absorb before the yellow. So if they do break, then we should end up with a gradient that is mostly red orange and then slowly will get progressively more and more yellow in addition to the color getting lighter. If the red and yellow food colorings absorb to the wool fiber at a similar rate, then we will see a gradation of dark orange to pale orange. In today's experiment, I am going to use McCormick's food coloring. The McCormick's red food coloring contains both red number 40 and red number 3. And we know from our past dyeing experiments that the red number 3 will strike to the wool fiber extremely quickly, whereas the red number 40 will take a little longer to absorb. The yellow food coloring contains yellow number 5, something that I haven't looked that closely at, so I have no, really no idea how it's going to respond. In each of these cups right here, I have half of a cup of water and I've added 30 drops of food coloring to each cup. This is a lot of dye for this experiment. Um, for reference, the, in the dip dyeing experiment we did, I think I used 31 drops of black food coloring. Um, so, you know, I, but I wanted there to be enough dye so that way it gives us some time to see um, like color differences. All right, let's turn this from red and yellow. And I know the yellow looks orangish, but that's just the way yellow food colorings work. All right, now this is an orange. Because I used equal drops of red and yellow, it's going to be a very reddish orange to start. I think when I did a pumpkin cake, I used at least two drops of yellow for every one drop of red. But I wanted to start off in equal numbers because I didn't want to start off with a super yellow orange and then be unable to tell if we ended up with just yellow in the end. For this experiment, I have pre-soaked 100 grams of 100% wool yarn for about 30 minutes so that way the fibers can be saturated. And I will squeeze out most of this water before we start dip dyeing. For the dye bath, I am heating up eight cups of water and I'm going to add three tablespoons, oops, approximately, of white vinegar. You need acid to help the colors bind. All right. And now I am going to add the dye, which is going to bring the total volume up to about nine cups. And I am going to allow this to return to a simmer, and then we will get ready to start dip dyeing. So in the pot, you can see little bubbles, but we're not at a rolling boil. This is a good temperature. Um, we don't want to agitate the wool fibers too much and risk felting the yarn. I have squeezed most of the water out of the yarn so that it is wet but not dripping. And now we are ready to start dip dyeing. Oh, see, that's totally orange. Yeah, and that's kind of like if you ever did candle making in elementary school, I just slowly like to increase the amount of yarn that is in the pot. And already you can tell that a lot of dye has struck to the fiber because we're already at a much paler um, color. But the pale color is still very much orange. Um, and so now that I only have 
you know, a few inches of white left, I am going to keep dipping in the section I've already done for a bit because I know that from the Breaking Black exper experiments that it took the red number 40 a while to bind. And so very slowly, um, and if I need the help of tongs, I will add more into the water. Interesting. So what I'm dipping in now barely is getting any color at all. So I'm actually going to add the rest of the fiber and get it wet and use the tongs to help. So right off the bat there's very little color left and it still definitely has an orange quality. This appears to me that the yellow is also striking to the, to the yarn rather quickly. Um, look at that, you know, not even a couple minutes in the dye bath is basically clear. Um, wow, interesting. And there wasn't even much, um, well, we have no idea what the proportions are of red number three and red 40 in the McCormick's red food coloring. So we can't know how much, like, if, if there, you know, should have been any breaking or not, or how quickly stuff would strike. And this edge, on the camera it's looking yellowish, but in person it does really look like a pale orange to me. Um, so just qualitatively right now, I would say that we got a beautiful gradient of orange, but I didn't really see any breaking. Um, this isn't like when we dip dye with Wilton's Violet and you see the pink absorbed the yarn and then all of a sudden it's blue and it's kind of like, wow, what a color change. Um, this was much more subtle and even. And while still beautiful, it did, you know, we didn't really see much or any breaking. So since the dye bath is clear, um, I feel like we can remove the yarn. I mean, look at that. You see the runoff? That is completely clear. There is nothing left in there. Um, and this is only surprising because in some of my other videos, we've seen green left behind. So, you know, I don't know what to say about why or anything, but I mean, look at that. That's so pretty. But definitely, you know, I see, you know, tones of orange. I'm not seeing orange and then yellow. But anyway, I will let this cool and then we'll wash it and um, chat some more. Before I wash the fiber, I just wanted to show you how pretty it looks in this spiral. And we really got a gorgeous, we really got a gorgeous gradient today, probably because we started with so much dye, so it allowed us to really start at a deeper color than sometimes we do. But anyway, it is now cool. So we will turn on some cool water and use some liquid this soap to add a little bit of soap and we are going to rinse the fibers until this rinse water runs clear and so sometimes it's clear like in this case basically immediately but sometimes it does you know there's a bunch of red that, or so that you need to rinse out so it can take a while but I will keep rinsing until the water is clear and then rinse out the soap and then we'll hang it to dry and we'll come back when we have the finished dry yarn. Here is our finished dry yarn where we go from a deep pumpkin orange and it gets lighter and lighter until we end up with almost this peach orange color. And so the question remains, is this just a gradient of color or are we actually seeing the colors break? And it's really hard to tell. Um, clearly we know that reds bind first, but is this orange less red than this one, or is it just a paler tone? The main ingredient on McCormick's yellow food coloring is yellow number five, 
although looking closely at it, it looks like it actually has a little bit of red food coloring in there as well. And it certainly looked orange when we added the 30 drops initially. When I looked up Wilton's orange ingredients, I found that the only ingredient was yellow number five, and it doesn't have any red in it at all. So at really high concentrations, you can get an orange from just this food coloring, which means, and you know, makes me wonder, are we seeing yellow right here, or are we seeing yellow number five, which has a bit of an orangish tinge? Now I have used this yellow food coloring to make actual yellow um, in yarn before, so I can say that even um, at more concentrated this, you can get a yellow from it. So I don't think that this is just the yellow being present, um, but we also have, um, you know, we also still have some of the red here. And so I think that the yellow does bind at a similar rate to the red. And while, you know, we still got a stunning gradient right here, there is clearly a lot less dye at this end than there was over here. And so breaking or not, you can get a gradient, but it's not um, as extreme as what you see with Wilton's Violet, where you really do break into pink and blue, and it's extremely visible. Tell me what you think. Did the orange food coloring break into red and yellow, or are we just seeing a gradient of orange? My vote is we're mostly seeing a gradient of orange, although maybe you can show me some pictures of something and convince me otherwise. Um, I love getting your suggestions for other videos, and I hope to make more exciting dyeing videos in the future. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can stay up to date with all of the Chemnitz Tutorials videos. I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and thank you for watching.